These were some of the verses related to Hajj, which has been mentioned quite in detail in Surah Al Baqarah, especially from the verses around 195, 194, and so forth. Uh, nowhere you may find any further or more details in one place than this place in the Quran. Many verses have been recited and many not regarding this right here in this place. Some of the things I would like to mention from this, as we know everybody is in the mood of Hajj for whatever reason it may be, and it is just that through Hajj, we get to other points in our life. So Hajj is something we already know. Maybe you have performed it. Maybe you want to, or maybe you have the intention again to do so. In all of these, even if it is not, we want to picture ourselves there as if we are going to do Hajj. Let us see some of those things, and before we Open it if there are any questions at the same time, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Now, <coughs> normally the actual hajj part has two things, umrah and hajj. Umrah, scholars have differed whether it is a pillar of Islam or not, but hajj we have no doubt it is. 
Some they say it is, some they say do not. Let us put it with Hajj. They are two separate things. So based on the views, it will be whether you have to do Umrah or not. But normally any person who has not done, they normally do it. And we know that Hajj are of three types. Tamattu, Qiran and Ifrat. So Tamattu is where you do Umrah and then you get out of the Ihram. Ihram is referred to two things. One is the code of dressing which applies on men and also on women up to an extent. Then there is the ihram, which is the intention itself. Without intention, your hajj and umrah or any other of your deeds will not be accepted. In the libas al ihram, the clothing of ihram, if you do not abide by that, it can be compensated by fidya. Atonement. Right? So let us see this Hajj and Umrah. First we do Umrah and then we get to Hajj. Umrah, normally we know that when we are traveling in the plane, unless you are coming from Medina, mostly we have to make our intention while we are still in the place because there are five allocated places appointed by Rasulullah that this is the Miqat, the place from where you have to make the intention. So you are not allowed to go further without that intention. Prior to that, you are already wearing the clothes, unless you are traveling by road, so you may wear it at the place, such as Zul Hulayfa in Medina, where you make your intention, we all proceed further. In the case of women, if they are having menstruation, still they can make the intention for Umrah and proceed. Once they are clean, <coughs> they will take shower and clean themselves and go and continue with their umrah and perform it as a regular person. Say for example, she is going now to Makkah and her menstruation is possibly on 7th or 8th of Dhul Hijjah, the Hajj starts in 8th. So she can still make the intention of umrah and if she purifies before that, even up to 8 Dhul Hijjah, no problem, then she can go and do her Umrah and then come back and redress herself again with the intention for Hajj. But if in case it does not happen, then she will change her intention for Hajj Iqran and continue from there to Mina. Now we are already there, we have done our Hajj, uh, sorry Umrah. In Umrah, there are certain things, uh, we normally do two things, that's tawaf and sa'i apart from uh, shaving or clipping or dressing our hair. We know the intention with the hajr aswat which we fa uh, face after you start with Bismillah and Allahu Akbar and then you go seven rounds. Apart from the dua of Rabbana Atina between the ruknain in each round, the rest you can make any dua you want. After that, you pray behind the maqam, maqam Ibrahim. It is the place where the stone is on which Ibrahim والسلام, was putting his foot when he stood up to, uh, to, while building the Kaaba. If you are not able to pray behind it, then wherever possible, the two sunnah, if you are able to, it is good. Then you proceed to Safa wal Marwa. I'm not going to all the details. I'm just giving you what people have done or what you had, have done. So it's a revision and, and a lesson. So when you get to Safa, you, it's better while you are going towards the Mount Safa to recite in Safa wal Marwata min sha'a'irilla illa akhiriha fi surat al Baqarah. Then once you climb the mountain, then you face the Kaaba and you raise the hands to make the dua. With la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la ila akhiri anja zawada sadaqa abda ila akhiri, then you make the dua. Then you repeat this, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika till again you make dua. Then you repeat it for the third time and then again you make dua. And then you, after third you do not repeat but walk till you get to Marwa and you repeat the scenario of Safa in Marwa without that in the Safa al Marwata which you were doing while you were about to arrive to Safa. And you start from Safa Marwa, these are two mountains. The seven rounds will finish on Marwa, 
this is your umrah, you get dressed for the ladies, they cut from the back and so forth and then you are free and normal as if you are not even in Makkah in the sense that whatever was halal for you is halal now again. Then the day of Hajj would come and at this point, in this time, uh, sorry, in this year we know that the Hajj is starting on, what, what day is Eid there? Thursday. So Arafah is? Wednesday. So the Hajj will start on Tuesday. Jazakumullah khairan. So this coming Tuesday, today is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Hajj will start. The reason I'm mentioning it by day is I want you people to know these things. So follow it up mentally and spiritually. You feel that the Hajjis are going. You are dreaming about it. MashaAllah. They are uh, moving in millions and millions towards Mina. So you have to know it will start on Tuesday. They, some they go before that, you are allowed to go, but the Sunnah is to move at that time. We cannot follow Sunnah in everything because of the population. It's not possible, the number of people who are there. So there will be ups and downs. So you arrive in Mina, you pray Zohar to Raka'ah. The Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to pray it to Raka'ah and not four. Two Raka'ah, but in Zohar time, when Asr time will come, you pray Asr two Raka'ah. Maghrib time comes, pray Maghrib three Raka'ah. Isha time comes, pray Isha two Raka'ah. And then whatever you want to do, do and sleep and whatever, till Fajr, you pray your Fajr. Then you move towards Arafah. You can move even before, even later than that. Then you go. The Sunnah is that you not, do not enter Arafah before sun, uh, 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 the zenith of the moon when it goes towards the uh, PM, towards the afternoon. Uh, you enter Arafah, the place of Arafah, at the time of Zuhr. But 99.99% whoever is targeting Arafah, they all enter because it's not possible to follow this one. Because you will be in a valley. Valley has got no place, no, it's a big valley, it's, uh, uh, there is nothing apart from water flowing place, possibly if a lot of rains come and things, and uh, there is no facilities there, you know, Arafah itself is tough, so they move everybody inside anyway. So you stay there, the time of Zohar comes, you pray your Zohar to Raka, the Sunnah is to pray Asr with it to Raka also. In the Khutbah, in the Masjid there, Masjid Namira and all these things we know, the best thing on that day is to make dua. Not tasbih, not reciting Quran. It's not that you are not allowed to do it. Because there will be a time you will get tired. But while you, if you have all the options in front of you and you are ready for all of it, always start with dua. That is the place of dua. You can make where, well, if you stand and face the Qibla, that is the best. If you cannot, in whichever way, it is okay. Now the hours are long, four or five hours. It's a challenge. You can't continue anyway. So whatever you can. Wallahi, by the time you get out of Arafah, you will feel that you have not done enough. You feel so empty in one way that, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I had been waiting for this day to come in my life. I, I get that money possibly... You people don't care about this part of it because you can, most of you can afford going every year if you really want to. But people from poor countries, you know, maybe they won't went on Sadaka and things. Even there, most of us, we've, we cannot focus for those entire hours. It's a challenge. Hot weather, even if it was cold. There are so many things. Important thing is you keep on doing whatever you can and keep on trying, even if you fall asleep, okay, I'm going to do a rest with the intention to revive myself and come back and do. I'm not going to give the tips of the food and stuff because we don't need it. So, okay, that's what we do. And then the moment the sun starts to set down, uh, uh, you are not allowed to pray in Muzdalifa, though, uh, in Arafah Maghrib, though the time for Maghrib starts. But the Sunnah is to pray your Maghrib and Isha in, in Muzdalifa. That is on our way back from Arafah to Muzdalifa, then back again to our original desti destination, Mina. Coming on the way to Muzdalifa, it's very important to spend the night there. Ashabul Azar, those who have got legal excuses, they can proceed earlier and so forth. And that is also very important to stay there and then pray your Fajr. And when it gets very lightened in the east to keep on making dua till then 
in the mash'ar or wherever you are Allah able to in Muzdalifah, that's a very challenging place due to limited facilities, extremely limited facilities there. Then you go to Mina. You may choose directly to go and throw the stone. On that day, we throw it only on one place, the biggest one, Al-Aqaba. After that, you sacrifice. After that, you shave, not your beard, your hair. Just don't take the message wrongly. And then you use your head and shoulders shampoo. And then you get dressed to go to Makkah to do your tawaf and sa'i. And tawaf and sa'i is a pillar of hajj, as wukuf fi arafah is a pillar of hajj. And this tawaf and sa'i is for hajj, not the umrah one that you had done already. After this, everything which became restricted on you because of hajj becomes halal to you again, open, everything, including your wife. Right? And then you come back to stay in Mina, where you spend the night, two nights, three uh, or three, to throw the stones on the coming days in Jamarat. And after that you go to Makkah, and then on the final departure you throw the, uh, sorry, do the tawaf, tawaf will be there, to go home. These are the things involved. So Tuesday we start, Wednesday in Arafah, Thursday is the Eid for them also. They do not pray Salatul Eid because they are in Hajj. Others they do in Makkah, Kaaba, everywhere there is Salatul Eid. And then they stay back and they throw the stone on Saturday, uh, Friday, the second day of Eid, and Saturday. Majority of the Hajjahs, they would move out of Makkah, Amina on Saturday. There will be others who would wish, uh, who would stay back to throw it on Sunday, which is more perfect and better if you are able to. And then, of course, they start to come back. Many of the uh, Hujjaj, in fact, would start to leave Makkah from Saturday. From early afternoon, they start to leave the locals, they start to drive, and those on the, on the planes, possibly the late planes, they would be catching up and everything starts to get busy, uh, busy moving in and out and whatever. This is the actual rituals which are going to happen in Makkah. Um, in the day of Eid, when you go to throw a stone and few things, you are allowed to uh, do few things before the other and so forth without going into details. Now this is where Hajj is involved. Now we, please picture yourself in that Hajj. It's very important. It's not that you are wishing for something as a dreamer. La wallah. So when they are going to be in Mina, you think, oh, they are in Mina. <coughs> what are they doing? <coughs> oh, they are praying, they are doing tasbih, they are doing ustafar, they are saying, labbaik, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. So you start to say that thing. They are in Arafah, what are they doing there? Allahumma inni sa'im, I'm fasting. They are in Arafah, my two years of sins, inshallah, forgiven. And at the same time, what are they doing there? Doing istighfar. So I might as well do it. And the most beautiful of the hours would be from 12 about their time till sunset. That is just around 6 sometime. So for us, it is from 9 p.m. till about 3 or 4 in the morning. Say so from 9 p.m. on Thursday um, till Fajr time. That's on Thursday. Fajr time on Thursday. So that is the time where they are going to be actually making dua in Arafah, and the Arafah continues till the middle, middle, middle of the night. So for us, still it has. So you try to regulate your time on Wednesday on this, to keep on asking Allah. You would be waking up for suhoor. That is also the time for Arafah. Actual time of Arafah is still there. Sa'at al-istijaba is still there. Do not miss out on that. That is the day when Allah forgives the majority of the maximum majority, any biggest number of people whose sins are forgiven at one time in one occasion is Yom Arafah. You do not want to miss out on that. It's not that only who are there, their sins can be forgiven. Why should we be left behind? Allah is most generous. Allah is of forgiving. He would love if you raise your hands and you say, Allah, I'm not there. 
but you are all now and you know that I want also to get the rewards of those people, Allah will give it to you, inshallah. You never know. So you have to involve yourself, and that's why I wanted to remind us of this. And then one of the most important things, brothers, I keep on reminding is al istighfar And we know al istighfar min aham al asbab li jalbi risk. One of the most important reasons for the risk to come is istighfar فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسُلُ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا About Nuh عليه السلام and his people when he told him them what to do in Surah Nuh I have said it many times and I've invited you people and requested you to go and read this Surah in what they have been promised. We know that Rizq is basically our talab our request, our, our whatever, it is all to do with rizq. Rizq means sustenance. Now, your child is a rizq. Your wife is a rizq. Your money is rizq. The knowledge which you get is rizq. And the amount of ibadah you do is the most important rizq. And the jannah which you will get is the most, the, the finale of it all. And to get that, you need all of this rizq. So subhanAllah, everything revolves around rizq. And that all of this comes from فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارَ Istighfar, istighfar, istighfar. And you really have to mean that you are doing istighfar. You know, it's not just with the time you are doing istighfar and you don't even know what you are saying. Then you, you then I said, brother, what you said? What? Oh, I don't know what I was saying. You don't even know. This is not istighfar. Istighfar, you really know that you are saying Astaghfar, Astaghfar, Astaghfar. You know Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. And it's amazing that the amount Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless us all with. And you know, the magical part of it is that um, whenever we have a musibah, some form of issues, problems in us, people that differ how to tackle it. Same problem, difference amongst the people. Yes, there are certain things to do with your genes, your biological background, or, or family history, or whatever. I, I, I am with you. But you see that one same t type of problem, one person is sick, another one is in hospital, third one gets in heart attack, and another one feels nothing. And everybody are going through the same issue. Yeah, they, they, all of this is besides the point. But what is really going to help you is this is the far. It brings you peace and tranquility. And gives you, when you have that kind of belief in it, ajaib. And then, when you take care of your families, your, your kindred, and so forth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases your rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lengthens your life. Subhanallah, you know, most of the time we say, hey, spend in the path of Allah, do this, man, come on, this. You, oh, you said this is difficult. She, okay, fast man, this nine days. Ah, Sheikh, you know, I love my food and we have got so many ch barbecue chops here still in New Zealand. Though the supply, they can't supply, but it's, I, I can't restrain myself from food. Fine, keep on eating. But if we can't even do a step far, you can't even call your mom and dad or your brother or son or fellow Muslim brothers and say, Assalamu Alaikum. Then what is what is left after that? Nothing. You can't do anything. That means, so re rejoice these nine days, and then the Eid will come, and the celebration starts anyway. <coughs> Saying salam, catch up with few of your friends. You say assalamu alaikum. You know, make one text and send it to too many. You say I love you, brothers and sisters, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala. You really mean it when you say that, and so forth. Ways to get rewards. Try to create your own way. Think. From, don't, don't focus only on what we said or what came to you in WhatsApp. So this is an idea, this is an idea, this is an idea. Try to be innovative and try to think of something from your own self. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Oh, you know, I can. This week there are four brothers who have to clean this masjid. I'll tell them I'll do it alone. You see? Uh, we take the things like this lightly. It's not easy, but the rewards, Allahu Akbar. So let us be that way. Jazakum Allah khairan. And I pray to Allah that may Allah give us the rewards of those who judge. May Allah give them the rewards of their hajj and forgive their sins. Amen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Fadal yaqeen.
Yes, that's the intention you are going for Hajj, but you do not want that intention, otherwise everything will become restricted on you because you may have to pay in Ramadan. So the application of the restriction starts from when you, you get to the point of the Miqat, and from there you say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَكَ عُمْرَةً or Umratan wa Hajjah depends what you are doing, or لَبَّيْكَ Allah اللَّهُمَّ Hajjah if it is only Hajj you are doing. So from there the restriction applies, not before. So even if you wear the ihram clothes from here, you are just wearing clothes. Yeah, so no restriction applies at all. It is only from that point where you make the intention. Yeah, you have made the intention. Yeah. And if, la qadr Allah, something happens and you die, inshallah you won't die, just uh, as an example, you get the ajar of hajj because the intention was there. And Allah knows your intention. But the regulations of the Hajj only applies from a certain place at certain time. It does not apply before. And this is Taisin with Allah to make things easy. Allah could have said, from the moment you make the intention, all the regulations of, uh, apply. Khalas, some of us, we make intentions two, for two years before. Then everybody would be khalas, you know? No, it cannot be. So it is Taisin from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it only applies from a certain time. But the rewards, as I said, will be given if for some reason you couldn't make it, inshallah, because you had a genuine intention for that. And Allah is not going to deprive you of that. وجزاكم الله خيرا ربنا اعطينا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الاخره حسنا وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزه ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته